By the way, everybody, quick reminder, this is our last episode for a while. We are going on one of our world-famous Buffy breaks. But yes. that's okay. We'll be back in a couple of months. We do not know precisely how long this break will last. We will be suspending patron payments uh, for the duration of the break. Mm -hmm. uh, the last payments will be for January, and then they'll be cut off. There, there will not be payments in February and every month subsequently till we return. But it's okay. You can definitely still come listen to me on Wubble Up a Pod Pod. We're going to be trying to release weekly for a while. I just started a new job, and Rex and I have uh, both got crazy wonky personal lives, uh, and we just need a break. But we're going to be doing other things. Check me and Alex from the heart out at Wubble Up a Pod Pod. Uh, you can find us on iTunes and all the other same platforms that you find Beer with Buffy on. We're hosted by Podbean. But hang in there. We'll be back. Take care, everybody. A couple hundred years ago, the only thing you had to worry about was a hangover. You're telling me you're an investigator? More or less. Today, because of your curse thingy, you can't sleep with anyone. You've got a taint in your boss. Or else you might feel a moment of true happiness. you got a real addiction to the brooding part of life. Lose your soul. Except for the bulk of it, I was nearly tortured to death. Become evil again. You're a demon hunter. Rogue demon hunter. And kill everyone. It's fucking fantastic. I love that sound. Thanks, Cornelia. I always appreciate your perspective. Still delicious, at least. It didn't explode as much as last time. Yeah. That's something. Hello, and welcome to Ale with Angel. I'm Rex. I'm Josh. Today on Ale with Angel, we are reviewing season two, episode 22, the season finale. There's no place like Plurtsklerb. Plurtsklerb. Yeah, there you go. Jeez, Rex, you can't even pronounce Plurt's Glurb? I can barely pronounce most words. How long have you been podcasting? <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> Actually, we've been doing this for like nearly five years. Pretty much five years. <laughs> yeah, I think we started in February of 18. Yeah. So. Yeah, damn. Woo! Uh, Party! Well, hey, guess what, guys? We don't exactly have any uh, reviews or voicemails to talk about if you do want to review us you can do that on itunes or any of your favorite podcast listening platforms yes once we get up to 75 we're gonna give out another free hoodie that's right plural we've done it before we'll do it again and yes that is a threat yes i am threatening you with a good time also i have good news uh to all of our non-us listeners apparently there is no end to the countries we can send shit to now. Oh, I saw that. Um, yeah, I uh, sent out a sticker to one of our, our last review we got by Dead Serious, and he lives in Australia, and there was no issue with it getting sent there. So, yeah. Well, fuck a doodle do, Rex. Indeed. Is he a Patreon? He is. He is a Patreon subscriber. He is, in fact. <laughs> well, speaking of, hey... If you're an executive doodle do, then I'm gonna read off your name right now. They are Bridget McCloy, Dead Serious, Callista, Ali Bonarigo, Nathan Lancy, Kristen, Rachel Gregory, Rachel Doodle Doo, D. Sharinghausen, Clubby Seal, Mr. Tabalicious, Sandra Craig, Jay Sommer, Christina, Catherine Parkinson, Karen Moon, Chris V Man, Pat Likes Turtles, Scarlet Choi, Bad at Changing Their Names Heaps. Kfro horse dildo with a BWB logo gnome. Carl! Father DeFinistrato. Matthew Indiber, Kelly MC, Jesse Rain, Alex from the Heart, and Carrie Phillips. Thank you so much. Without you, this show literally is not possible. Well, it kind of is. You know, we did it for a while before we got you Patreon subscribers. Yeah. But it's way more possible with you. Yes. <laughs> not to be contrary, but hey... That is how we do here on the Buffy with yes. Beer. So, uh, we finally have a date in place for our live stream. The date is January 29th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Make sure you check time zones. 1 p.m. Eastern Time, January 29th, we will be doing the, the live stream. If you are a Patreon supporter, you will be getting a link to join us on a Zoom call where you can ask us questions, and then we'll be live streaming the whole thing on YouTube where there will be a live chat so non-patron supporters will be able to interact with the chat and we might be pulling some questions off there as well. That is 1 p.m. Eastern Time, January 29th. On, that is a Sunday. Yeah, get on there, get you some, be part of the party. If you want to join us on the actual Zoom call, again, you have to be a patron supporter. This should be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Join us. <laughs> <laughs> I was once accused of all my friends being in a cult, and, you know... I, I, I think I say that this is better. There's worse things of being accused of. Probably. Also, that guy was a fucking idiot. Well, yeah, but still. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't wrong, but fucking idiot. <laughs> Even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> All right, I think it's time to get on with the mom synopsis. Last one of the season. Joshua, what are you doing, Joshua? It is clearly the dance of shame, mother. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to be ashamed about more than usual, Joshua? <laughs> For taking so goddamn long to move out of your house. <laughs> oh, but isn't it wonderful, you shameful piece of trash, Joshua? Yeah, I just had to find a place for my dreams to die without my soul dying with it. What the hell are you talking about, Joshua? Well, much like Lorne and Angel feel at home in L.A. because no one belongs in L.A., You've lost me, but go on, Joshua. I enjoy the attention, and it seems like you're speaking to me. <sighs> well, I found a full-time job in my chosen field of study. Oh, yes, yes, good for you, Joshua. By the way, you left some things in the lice room. I cleared all my stuff out of the maggot room, though, right? Sure, but who cares about the maggot room, Joshua? Because today on Angel... <laughs> Lorne isn't really dead because beheading just doesn't work that way with the Death Walk clan, and Cordelia has to put him back together with some help from the Grusalog. Wesley and Gunn finally convince the Woods cows that they are on the same side and they team up against the Covenant. Angel realizes he needs to help his friends when he hears of Lorne's beheading after Fred's cave gets ambushed by three soldiers of the Covenant. Angel and Fred find Wes and Gunn, and they set out to rescue the princess from the castle. Angel has to face his demon and fight the Grusalug. Wesley and Gunn storm the castle and fight Silas before he uses his mass head explodey device on all the cows. Cordelia gets the final blow on Silas and stops the fight between Angel and Grusalug. Fred uses the priest's book in tandem with her own knowledge of the portals to get them all home. Lorne gets his head back on, literally and figuratively. Then they destroy his bar with Angel's car. They return merrily to the hotel and receive a not-so-merry greeting from Willow. The end. The end. Ladies, gentlemen, spiny-headed little creatures. As soon as the sun goes down, 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 down. As soon as the sun goes down, 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 down. Competition is a beautiful thing. Ooh, dear. <laughs> uh, we got to go through this whole thing now, don't we? <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Not with that attitude. <laughs> well, this has been Beer with Buffy or Ale with Angel. I'm Josh. <laughs> I'm Rex. Oh, dear. We pick up where we left off last episode with Cordy upset that Lorne's lost his head. But hey, you know what? The head's still alive. So it's all fine. Technically, he lost his body. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cordy, Cordy's all, I don't like you here anymore. I want to go home. You didn't do anything wrong, buddy. And he's like, oh, honey, I'm right there with you. Ah! <laughs> ah! Opening sequence. Got back to the throne room. Ah! Ah! Like you do when a severed head starts talking to you. <laughs> and then a couple of slaves come in and they're like, oh, magnificent queen what is wrong and she's just like oh you know i'm meditating scream meditating it's fine <laughs> excuse me we noticed you're screaming could you perhaps be under duress I, this like all of us right <laughs> this 
I can't fucking remember what it's from, a movie or, or a show or what. The line being something about screaming yourselves to sleep. And I can't fucking remember what it's from. And it's been driving me nuts. Adam's Family? Maybe. I don't know. Because it's something about um, Morticia and Gomez in the first Adam's Family film in the 90s. The first night that Fester spends back at home, they hear him shrieking off in the distance because Thing has just jumped on his face. And cut to Morticia and Gomez. And she's like, ah, the shrieks in the night. I miss them so. Or something like that. <sighs> No, there's something specific of the the line screaming myself to sleep. Hmm. I I even tried looking it up. I could not couldn't find it. It was a half ass or half completed reference that was in my head, and it just so any any listeners that happen to know what that's from, please God, it will eat my brain alive till I I know it. But yeah, that's yep. what it reminded me of. I got nothing. So there's that. Lorne notes that he doesn't have any hands to cover his ears and explains that his species doesn't die until their bodies are mutilated, so there must be a backlog in the mutilation chamber. Yeah. Love that they have a chamber specifically for that. Some assholes come in because they heard her screaming. and already covered that. Uh, she says she likes the head. Uh, yeah. She doesn't want them to take it away. She wants to defile it. Maybe uh, make it into a candy dish later. She spits on them just to, pr- just to prove how much she loves defiling yeah. this head. I mean, the first thing I think of when you've got a severed head in a room and you're talking about defiling it is obviously skull fucking. I yeah, I mean that's. I'm that's, just. Uh, I'm sorry, but it's the most efficient way of defiling <laughs> a, a skull, you know. Yeah, it really is. I mean, unfortunately for Cordy, I don't think she has the equipment for that. But she's in a medieval setting; she can work something out. <laughs> I'm sure, it's gonna be okay, Lauren. <laughs> we're going to defile you just fine. Oh, wait. I think I lost track of where we were going with this. <laughs> candy dish. That's right. You, yes, candy dish. Your skull will become a candy dish. My roommates have a skull-shaped ashtray. It's pretty awesome, actually. You can just take the cap of the skull off, and both parts can be used as an ashtray. It's cool. wonderful. Um, So they don't seem... <clears throat> the cows don't seem convinced, but they leave anyhow. All right. My voice might sound like I just sucked helium for the rest of the episode, and I don't care. I'm a little sick. So, uh, Cordy doesn't know where the mutilation chamber is. That's a problem. Lauren highly recommends that she figure it the fuck out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I did like how, like, she's not taking it well. And he's like, oh, well, I understand. This is upsetting. But guess what? This is more upsetting. (laughs) I don't have a body. Oh, I see then. (laughs) Well, I'll just lay here and die eventually. Find the fucking chamber! (laughs) Cut to somewhere else. To be fair, Lorne, given the situation, is exceedingly calm. Yeah, quite calm and polite. He's handling it. Like, he shouldn't be the one having to handle this situation well. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I, oh, I didn't even want to imagine. So moving along. Cut to somewhere else where Silas, the perpetual frog-throated priest of the Covenant of Trombley, goes on some annoying diatribe about how she will now know who is the master and who is the cow or something. Now go kill Angel, he's Van Tall, which is a funny word for vampire around these parts. His heart is where a cow's is. <laughs> uh, and of course, the captain assassin whatever the it was fuck he the is. captain he's yeah. just credited as the captain his only response is disgusting at the location of the heart you know there's a lot of things i find disgusting general anatomy usually isn't one of them i mean maybe if you show me some deep sea creatures cloaca <laughs> then i'm gonna be like oh wow that's fucking gross but you know what don't you do you don't don't be ashamed of what you are ever these guys that is not their philosophy shame and more shame is their philosophy also silas shows us that he has a new toy Ooh, yes i like toys he he has a new toy it i have dubbed it the denogonizer 5000 <laughs> that's um, a brand name Head explodey, head explodey device is is the the off brand version. I would like to call it the Hamburglar. No, oh, no. it's the Denogonizer. 
It's the Denogonizer 5000. The handheld one that he has. The Dehamburgerizer. That, no. The George Foreman. No, the Denogonizer. <laughs> it is the Denogonizer 5000. <laughs> Lame. But, um, nothing about defenestration here, is there? No, no. Nobody's getting thrown out a window yet. No, no. Or at all this episode. That's what's wrong with this that episode. That is what's wrong with this episode. God, not once. really once. could have used that. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And he, then he demonstrates a one-man yes. George Foreman denogonizer. Yeah, the, the, that's, that's the denogonizer 3000. Three th- <laughs> it's very you're, effective, you're, but it, it, it only has a one-use, like, one target. Oh, you're talking about the 5000. Yeah, the 5000 is the big, like, going to kill them all that one was way too much on amazon i yeah I scrolled right past it, it yeah. didn't come up in my filter search right i mean who the fuck needs to denogonize to that degree i mean obviously silas i wasn't like he, gonna pay that many he's, schmeckles he's he's the exact clientele that they manufactured this thing for but like it's expensive it's it's so very he expensive. blows up this cow's head yes i mean human human and, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy seemed kind of like a tool anyway. He deserved it. I guess. He was- and then he makes the other slave clean it up, which is just rude. They were probably friends. Well, I mean, slavery in general is pretty rude. Well, yeah. Yeah, what are you yeah. going to do? <laughs> but, yeah, apparently he implied that this guy had assisted Cordelia or the rebels in some way. I don't know if this was a reference to last episode that something we missed. I have no idea. I didn't. But apparently this supposedly loyal cow was not loyal enough because he blows up his head. So he closes it out with some scary sounding cult shit. And if one of thy slaves offend thee, thou shalt smite him down. And if all of thy slaves offend thee, thou shalt smite them down too, even upon the very last one in the land. Meaning he gonna kill all the cows. Um, the denogonizer only kills the slaves who aren't rebelling. Yeah. Because the ones who are rebelling aren't wearing collars. They don't have collars, yeah. So, like... I'm really curious. I, they floated right over that one. It's, it's a bad plan. If he could just kill all the cows, he'd have done it. He wouldn't have waited for till he felt like he was losing. Right. It was a last uh, resort... To piss off the rebels. Yeah. Because they have nothing to rebel against if there's no one to save. Yeah, that that is a valid point. Um, that is a valid point. Yeah. So, cut to Rebel Cow Camp. Yeah, Rebel Cow Camp, where uh, Gunn and Wesley are about to be beheaded. As collaborators with the Covenant, or who the fuck ever. Yeah, uh, the, what'd you call them? Wood cows? Yeah. Forest cows, wood forest cows. Forest cows. Forest. I like forest cows. <laughs> the wild forest cows. Uh, they're they're looking to employ the original denogonizer. Oh. Oh the, yeah. The axe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's the very basic model mm-hmm. of denogonization. So and they've got them in stockades. Yep. And uh, but it's okay, Rex. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. Gun has a plan. <laughs> Where they die horribly, Wes burns in hell for eternity, and Gunn goes to heaven and rests in the arms of baby Jesus. That's a fine plan if you ask me. I mean, I think it'd be a bit awkward cuddling a baby, but you do you, bro. Why baby Jesus? I don't know. Wouldn't, I, wouldn't you have to like change baby Jesus' diapers? Also, like he wasn't a baby when he died. Or when he was the Messiah. What? Right. Wait, no. Did like, they think he was the Messiah when he was a baby? Of course they did. They I had to. Yes. Oh, because Mary was a virgin. Yeah. Sure. I believe it. <laughs> I think he was a donkey baby. <clears throat> you know, when you can't get it from Joseph and you're living in a, a fucking barn. <laughs> Who was she stupid? They weren't living in the barn. What? They were traveling and they stayed in the barn. They're living in a barn. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Thank you (laughs) for confirming what I said. (laughs) So uh, Gunn has a plan. It's about to come to fruition. And then it all gets completely fucked up because they're saved at the last second by some fucking jabroni covenant soldiers that are attacking the camp. Yep. 
Wes and Gunn run around with big fucking, they look like concrete bricks, but they must be wood or foam or, I mean. They're obviously foam that are poorly made to look like wood. (laughs) Yeah, I think they're supposed to be, to look like wood, but they looked like concrete to me. Anyway, they're just not heavy enough that they're able to fight with them on and cut to Fred's cave. Where Fred is making Angel some hard air quotes oatmeal. Mm, baby. Angel slept. He didn't snore. But apparently, <laughs> Fred does remember a bit of caterwauling. Caterwauling. It's a very caterwauling episode. Yeah. Cordy's caterwauling. Uh, I, I assume that Lauren was caterwauling at least a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. When he lost his head. Can Can I just say that especially this episode fred is a fucking joy oh she's a gem she's a just beast. like she's a goddamn national treasure of of all the characters she like she gives the some of the best lines and just she's actually written the way the characters all feel like they should be written but they aren't mm. she's very quickly becoming the heart of the team yeah like, I only say that because I know that she becomes part of the team, like, immediately. Right. Because, um, obviously, they have to save her. Anyway, Fred misses tacos. <laughs> Very excitedly yeah. is sitting here talking about her, like, thorn brush oatmeal. <gasps> tacos! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to caterwaul at your face, but, oh, my God, do they still have tacos? <laughs> my God, yes. How long have you been here? They still have tacos. They didn't outlaw tacos. Settle down. And then one of my quotes of the day. She mentions that she's been trying to make bark enchiladas. Angel says, bark enchiladas. How's that going? And she says, there's work to be done. All I can think is the tone. (laughs) The tone of when there's work to be done. (laughs) I mean, anything with bark is the main ingredient. Yeah, it's probably probably very off the mark. There's probably work to be done. I just can't. Tacos are good, but... For all the hoopla about them, they're not that good. Maybe I just haven't had the right tacos. I mean, partly, I think maybe you just also haven't had the right tacos. But, like, if you go more authentic with tacos versus, like, the kind of tacos we get around here. Taco Bob's. I mean. Let's go down to Bob's and get a taco. Put put it this way. Put it this way. These people are from L.A. Mm. The best Mexican food in the U.S. that you can get is in Southern California. Yeah, that makes sense. Like. Dude. Is they're right next to it. Dude. Dude. <laughs> like, yeah. I, no, nothing, no Mexican food I've ever had in my entire life has ever remotely come close to comparing to the Mexican food I had in LA. Noted. Remind me to go to LA sometime. I'll see if I can get in on a convention and get work to pay for it. I don't want to share my feelings. I don't want to open up. I want to find the guy that killed Tina. And I will look him in the eye. Then what? Then I'm going to share my feelings. Cut to the throne room where Cordy calls in a slave. Tries to tell her not to act like a slave, but, you know, try telling that to somebody who's been a slave their entire life. Also, though, like, tries to... Tries to tell her to not act like a slave, but really drinks it in at the same time. It's like right. you're mixed messages here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you know, eh, I understand where she's coming from, but she's trying. She's just trying her cordy best. <laughs> and then she tries to get her to take her to the mutilation chamber, but she couldn't possibly go there. No. It would bring shame upon the kingdom. Oh. So Cordelia, as her princessy self, demands that she take off her clothes, which... Gets Lauren to open his eyes yeah. real quick. Yeah. I mean, no one's that gay. I don't think Lauren is. <laughs> yeah, I think Lauren's bi or pan. I think Lauren, yeah, will, Lauren will fuck anything that's pretty. Lauren is an appreciation of all things pretty. Yeah. And people. That, that He definitely reads that way to me. <laughs> Cut to the cave again. There's a brief little exchange about L.A., uh, mostly how Angel's like, oh, I can't be in the sun in L.A. I I like how Angel has not just said, hey, yeah, I'm a vampire. Like, she would know what that means. Like, she's only been here five years. 
Well, she's heard of vampires. Yeah, exactly. She knows she knows what a vampire is, and like maybe he's just sick of the word. You know, when you've yeah, been maybe. something for two hundred fifty years, you just you don't want to hear yourself talk about it anymore. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I, I do imagine it's a bit of mentioning that he's a vampire probably is like, well, I got to mention this. And now we got to go through this whole spiel about how, like, no, I'm a good vampire. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. I don't want to eat you. I mean, it's just as accurate for him to say that he has a demon inside him. That's really yeah. all a vampire is. Right. With some very specific rules that we've come to label as a vampire. Right. I don't like labels. <laughs> <laughs> and then Angel sees the words, the portal words scrawled on the cave wall, clearly written by Fred. She knows all about them and she swears yes. that they don't work. And Angel's like, uh, well, I, I think they will. Uh, keep in mind, they are not words. They're consonant representations of a mathematical transfiguration formula. Get it right. I was going to say you took the words right out of my mouth, but that right yeah, out of my the mouth. The consonant representations of a mathematical transfiguration formula. That's what you took out of my mouth, yes. which is why I can't say it. Right. So good job. Yeah. Well, I, you know, well done. I wanted to unburden you. Oh, I'm so unburdened. <laughs> I feel so light and fluffy. Oh, wait. No, it's a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> but Fred swears that these, um, well, I should, for lack of a shorter term, <laughs> words, quote unquote, <laughs> Hard air quotes. Yeah, just th anytime they're talking about those words, there are air quotes there. Yes. Fred <laughs> swears that they don't work, and Angel is sure that they will. And then the people that Silas sent out to kill Angel find them. Three dudes run in, and they attack. He stabs Angel a couple of times, but apparently misses the heart. One of them are, is the rump-hearted captain. Rump-hearted? Yeah, because his heart's in his rump. He's rump-hearted. Oh, because he walked away saying yeah. he was going to stab him right in the rump. Yeah. And then he's like, no, 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 their hearts are in their chest. Like a cow. And, and he like, said it was disgusting. disgusting. So he, he's rump hearted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, because having your heart in your rump isn't disgusting. What an asshole. <laughs> now I'm being judgy. Look at me being all judgy. <laughs> you can have your heart in your rump if you want. Jeez, I guess. <laughs> Uh, Fred saves Angel, who's trying very hard not to vamp out. She hits him in the head. With, she hits the other guy in the head with a rock. And then she freaks out. She's like, oh, no, don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Uh, she clearly doesn't understand the rules of how vampires die. If only yeah. he'd told her that he was a vampire. Exactly. And yeah, he's her only hope. And he's a super hot white knight type. Of course, she doesn't want him to die. Right. I mean, she is obviously crushing real hard on him oh yeah I, oh yeah Ar, I, yeah words <clears throat> cut back to the woods cows they realize that gun and wes are not their enemies because no. they want to stop the princess from mating with the grusalog just as much as everybody else yeah they let him go and hey they're gonna go off and save the princess well they like were gonna find you and they're going to find Angel, and then they decide to stay because, well, not only do these guys have a cause worth fighting for, and gosh, that's just what they do, but finding Angel could be a bad idea considering what he was like the last time they saw him. Yeah. You never know how long he's just going to be cranky. And hey, you know what? There's an army right there, and they, they could just have an army. That could be useful. Yeah. And vice versa, because these guys are no match for the Covenant just because they can handle a small skirmish exactly and then gun gets all down on himself for leaving people to get themselves killed before talking about his own people back home right. yeesh what a drag <laughs> making up for your wrongs of sins of the past or something what an asshole that's sarcasm by the way yeah all right just making we got, sure we got it. that people knew that i wasn't serious about that right because it's just the internet we're talking about. <laughs> you never know. That's valid, actually. <laughs> uh, Back to the cave. Fred is mending Angel's wounds. She's like, you heal fast. And he's like, yeah, because I'm a monster. God damn it, <laughs> Fred. Don't you know how broody I am, Fred? Yes, and I like it. <laughs> now shut up and brood all over me. <laughs> and the blue guy... 
<laughs> butts in. He's like, yeah, we'll write that on your bones when he tears you to pieces. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> And then Angel interrogates him for a moment. Oh, hold on. I do have a, a quote of the day here. Quote uh, away. As, after dude's talking shit, uh, Fred just looks over at him and casually, without any emotion whatsoever, really says, I'll just roll him over the cliff into the Draken gully like I did the others. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. <laughs> She's a good one. She's a keeper. She's a keeper. Damn. She's definitely a keeper. <laughs> And just like, no, we can get information out of him. And so the guy's like, oh, they're going to kill Cordy right after she bangs the Gruselog. They already killed Lorne. You're so fucked. I'm a bad guy. Uh, and Angel's like, I have to go. And Fred's like, no, you're too hot. <laughs> and Angel's like, but I've got to, mister. <laughs> or, uh, Mrs. <laughs> Anyway, Blue Guy makes one last attempt on their lives. Angel shoves Fred aside and snuffs him out. Snuff with a knife. Snuffs him out with a knife. (laughs) (laughs) Except it was with a knife. So it's more like, ow, you're stabbing me. Why am I a Muppet elephant? Ah! <laughs> I don't want to say the name too clearly because I don't want to get sued by Jim Henson Studios. AKA you mean by Disney. Disney? Yeah. I mean, we're reviewing Disney's shows. Keep that in mind. <laughs> we're fucked, aren't we? Probably. Yeah. So he checks on Fred, whom he had to throw to the ground rather violently. Well, and the captain actually cut her. In the, in the shoulder, oh. she had, she did have a cut. I didn't. I see. I thought she was just wounded from being thrown to the ground. No, no, he actually cut her. Okay, good to know. Cut back. <laughs> cut back to the <laughs> mutilation chamber. Yes, which is exactly where you would want to cut back to. No pun intended. Yes, except for the part where puns are intended. I got lots of those later. Good. <laughs> so they find a green body that's wearing Lauren's clothes. But since when does Lauren have five toes? Yeah. Apparently, Lauren has more or less than five toes. Well, there's no reason that if this were Lauren's body that he should still be alive. But clearly, based on his incredulity at the number of toes, (laughs) this isn't Lauren's body. That is correct. Crusalog comes in with excellent timing and proclaims his wickedness for having swapped Lauren's body with this one. She hugs him, slapping Lauren's head against (laughs) Gru's butt. Quote of the day. Lauren says, oof, feels like somebody works out. (laughs) That is where your head would be, isn't it, Lauren? And then Cordy Cordy holds up Lauren's head. I made a pun. Yeah, I noticed. Good good job. It didn't seem like you noticed. I know you're proud of me, Rex. Anyway, Cordy holds up Lauren's head, uh, giving one of my quotes of the the scene, uh, where Lauren says, Hi, and thank you from the bottom of my neck on down. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I liked that one too. But anyway, Grusalog sent Lauren's body to his family. His cousin Landokmar is going to transport his head back home. Cordelia is so excited that she hugs him again, this time whacks Lauren's head against the wall. (laughs) And he probably yeah. says something quirky again. Yeah. He's like, hey, watch the head or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Hey, you're not real. Or I'm not real. Somebody here isn't real, and I suspect it's you. So if you're not real, then that means that my head came off back there, and then I'm dead now. Dead. Cut back to the forest cows. Forest cows where they make Wesley their leader. Because he had some semblance of a plan. Yeah. <laughs> Wesley is as confused as gun. Why do people keep putting me in charge of things? At the exact same time, <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing as he said it, and it couldn't have been a better place to call out. And it was I, perfect. We'll go over this later, but like the people who probably should be in charge are also, I think, likely the people who don't really want to be in charge yeah like 
I mean, that's been a the, saying for a long ass time. Right. But, but like, if Wesley wanted to be in charge, he wouldn't be good at what he's fucking doing. That's yeah. for damn sure. Because if, especially in like a combat situation, if you're in charge, you don't want to be there and you don't want to have to make the bad decisions that you're going to have to make. Well, and like, yeah. And also, he shows us exactly why he's the best person to be in charge oh, yeah. later. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, more about that later. Cut back to the cave. Yes. Where Angel finishes mending Fred's fresh wound, then fucks off to help his friends. It's about fucking time he I know, left. right? Jesus, it took forever. Oh, I can't let them see me. I'm too broody, Fred. Don't you understand? And, uh... And then he fucks back in because he doesn't know how to get there. <laughs> and Fred is very happy to help him fuck off. I mean, I can't believe he just tried to leave without even saying something like... I'll come back for you. Well, you're going to make it home or something. Nope. He just leaves. Well, and she even, I guess, implied that she didn't want to go with him. But the moment he like steps back in, he's like, I have no idea how to get there. She's just like, oh, well, I'll take you. <laughs> She's just so happy to help. Of course she is. She's a goddamn national treasure. She is. She is. Cut back to the throne room. Yes. Grusalog is doing a little bit of self-flagellating for enjoying his hug with Cordelia a little too much. Accidental intimate touch. Oh, oh my ankles were exposed. <laughs> Cordelia reciprocates, though, and it's kind of cute. She's like, mm, that was a good hug, though, baby. And then Grusalog is all like, wine, wine, wine. I'm not a real champion. I'm not worthy of lifting your burden. Oh, hush, of course you would say, what about a burden? <laughs> oh, you know, the part where after we boink, I take your visions. No, actually, yeah. th actually, that sounds great. But no, I need those. I really liked what they did here because I would I would have sworn with the way they were playing this out that Cordy's response to the visions would have been like, no, okay, here, have them. Right. But like, yeah, you're going to have a stroke and you're yeah. going to die because as I could completely forgot, she shouldn't have them because she's a human and she can't handle them. Right. The way that what's his tits could. Yeah. Half, for, Cause he was half demon. Cause he was half demon. Was he only half demon? Yeah. He was half demon. Huh? Yeah. Irish boy. God, I can't remember his name. Doyle. 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 Doyle! Doyle! <laughs> oh, so... <laughs> Cordy then has a vision of a snarling beast attacking Grusalog, and it seems to be Angel, but she doesn't know that. Yeah, she does not, in fact, know that. Back to the forest cows. Yes, they're having, they're having a planning meeting and uh, getting down to the nitty-gritty. They know about the Denogonizer 5000. Oh, they know. They know. Oh, they know that it drains the grease and it's easy to clean. Yeah. And that it was also... They have a nice little printout of the, the Amazon page. It was an excellent ad campaign for McDonald's for quite a while. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> so they're planning a battle. They have to challenge the Grusalog to a fight and they know that he cannot refuse because fucking tradition or something yeah so they have to get the head blowy uppy device i'm sorry the denogonizer 5000 from yeah. silas before he uses it on every cow in the land <laughs> if he thinks that he's losing because he's a little bitch yeah angel and fred pop Megalo in megaloman megalo megalomaniac megalomaniacal yeah i'm trying <laughs> megalomaniacal individuals such as that Usually are little bitches. Yeah, that'll happen. And then Angel and Fred pop in. Just We're a little celerity. It's okay. <laughs> Angel arrives just in time to instruct them all on what proper guarding is. <laughs> <laughs> Very much in the way that, uh, what's his name, from Better Call Saul does. Yeah. By uh, showing them just how easy it was for him to sneak in. Armin Trout. Armin Trout. Mike. Mike. Mike Armin. Mike Armantrout. Yeah, that crazy old fuck. Love that guy. I was actually just watching something that had him in it, and I can't remember what it was now. Well, Google it. So, <laughs> Wes and Gunn keep the men from attacking Angel and Fred. 
Angel introduces Fred. <laughs> Wes introduces the rebels, explaining that they've joined forces. Wesley invites Angel to help with the battle plan. Angel declines on account of being ashamed from earlier. Because yeah, I'm so... He's, he's so broody. God damn broody, Wesley. Didn't you remember how broody I am? Wesley nods and smiles and a very understanding smile. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Angel's like, oh, speaking of, Fred, portals, go! <laughs> oh, I don't know a lot. You know, just the trionic speech craft formulation modification has to alter the dynamic reality sphere. Litzbaum predicted it at Zurich in 89, laughed him off the stage. Although the slavery and degradation's no laughing matter. <laughs> it's no crook grain and collard berry breakfast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, my God. She's a gem. She's a fucking national treasure. <laughs> so. And just as uh, Angel is about to tell them about Lorne being dead, Landok shows up with Lorne's head in a basket. In a basket. That's correct. Landok apparently is honor bound to not fight Angel for freeing the cow from earlier, referring yes. to Fred, because he's in the middle of a sacred duty transporting his kinsman home. Angel squeezes in the news real quick that he was just about to tell to the guys. By the way, I was trying to tell you that Lauren's dead. Landox's like, yes, I have one right here. It's bulky, but I consider it carry-on. <laughs> 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 Quote of the day. He opens up the basket. They all look at Lauren's head. Angel's like, uh, he was, Gunn says, yeah. Wesley goes, hmm. And Lauren goes, that's it? Where's the praising and extolling of my virtues? Where's the love? They all scream, except for Fred. Right. Who's amused. Yeah. Hilariously amused. Because she probably knew right. that beheading doesn't kill those demons. Yeah. That's funny. Anyway, back to the woods cows. Yes. Uh, woods cows at night after dark. Ooh, nocturnal woods cows. Uh, but yeah, Gunn points out to Wesley that he's sending men to die. And this, this response right here is yeah. why people keep putting Wesley in charge. Yep, this is one of my quotes of the day. Wesley says, yes, they are. You try not to get anybody killed, you wind up getting everybody killed. Because the man does what needs to fucking get done. Yep. I'm getting some very parallel Ripper vibes off of him here. I wonder if it's his watcher training. Were they watchers before uh, they were brutal bastards or after? Or were they selected to be watchers because, because they could be brutal bastards? While also being nerdy, delightful sons of bitches. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain amount of pragmatism that you would have to have to have that kind of job. Why not like, both? Why not? I mean, yeah, that fits to me. That fits Absolutely. To me. It tracks. Uh, Angel asks what he wants him to do, and he's like, well, kill the undefeated Grusalog, of course. Yeez. And he's like, God damn it, Wesley, I can't do it because you know how broody I am. <laughs> yes, damn it, Angel, that's why I need you to do it. Nobody can brood like you, nobody, you hear me? But I'll brood so hard, I'll never be able to unbrood. Because <laughs> I'm so fucking broody. <laughs> oh, of course you will, silly, don't be a giddy goat. Gosh, I guess you're right, Wesley. dum de dum de dum de dum <laughs> Another quote of the day here. Gunn says to Wesley, you really think he'll come back? Wesley says, I need him to think that. I'm like, shit, you're a cold bastard. I fucking love you. Love him to death. You know what? That's a risk he's willing to take. And while it gives me the slightest moment of a pang of, oh, you bastard, the rest of me, 99.9% .9 of the rest of me goes, yeah, but that's what needs to be done. The stakes yeah. are too high. Yeah. You have to get home and you have to, at the very least, save yourselves. Right. Like either. If you can save the cows, great. Right. But. I mean, the simple truth is, is either, either A, they get home or B, they save all the slaves here in this world. If they fail at A. They really have to have B happen. Yeah, that's like, true. Like <laughs> that is in their best interest, regardless. You're right. Yeah, it didn't even occur to me that particular way. 
I can hold a note for a long time. <laughs> Actually, I can hold a note forever. But eventually, that's just noise. It's the change we're listening for. The note coming after and the one after that. That's what makes it music. So, uh, cut to the throne room. Yeah, to the throne room where Silas busts in, demanding that... Grew and Cordy get it the fuck on already. Get to the maiden. I dare say it looks like it's fucking time. And she's like, <laughs> ew, voyeur much? God. It's, it's fucking time. <laughs> uh, Cordy's all like, Grew, don't fight a big green spiky thing. And he's like, uh, because that's about how smart he is. <laughs> and then Angel approaches in the courtyard using the torch of challenging that... Fred previously said that she would help him put together. And Silas tells Gru he has to go fight. Cordy begs him not to. Silas gets Gru alone and convinces him that this guy will defile Cordy if he wins. You can't yeah. let him win. Totally plays him. Clever move on Silas's part, though. Yeah. Like, I mean, this Grusalog, though, like, he just laps it right up. But, you yeah. know, I guess when you're submerged sub immersed in that reality right as a slave i mean and he's he's been being brainwashed by silas for how fucking long now? brainwashing that's the term thank you like yeah. yeah he he has no real real reason to not believe silas yeah that's true that's true so uh Gru's all pumped up for a good fight now cut to the courtyard yes where uh Wesley and the cows, the West cows, if you will, yep. send in the diversion guys who run out yelling death to the state like fucking idiots. But, you know, that was the plan. Yes. I really wish I had heard the conversation where Wesley convinces them this is a good idea. Or do they know they're going to die? Based on the way Gunn told Wesley this, I don't think they know that they're going to die. I imagine he was like... All right, so you're going to create a diversion, and you're going to get these guys over here, and you round them into a circle, see, and then we'll back you up. He had to have lied to them. I don't think he did. I think he just didn't tell them more information about the capabilities of the guards or something. And they're all really like, dumb? I mean, I mean <laughs> they definitely don't seem all that smart. They don't. So. Think about it. They've all been slaves their whole life. They haven't had any education. Or, at the very like, least, a random pack of woods people right who don't have any formal yeah, military training. exactly like they they don't know the full stakes of of combat they that's why they had to have wesley there to fucking you know yeah wes has one good tactical idea and they're like you're our leader now exactly so yeah good point he probably didn't have to say much to convince them at all um but okay we follow the leader so yeah, the combat with the Grusalog, uh, and that combined with the other dudes running out and yelling death to the state, that gets everyone all distracted and everything and opens basically a perfect door to the gate where they can scale the walls and get into the castle. Correct. Then Grusalog starts out his fight with Angel by burning the fuck out of his hand on a torch yeah where angel questions what can he not feel pain no he's just a badass oh no he's the gruselog he overcomes all things well so does angel they fight yeah and it's an okay fight it's all right he gets knocked down fred tells him to stop holding back he's like i'm not holding back I'm holding on. And I'm like, well, that kind of seems like the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Need a little more distinction than that, Angel. Whatever. Like, He's mid-fight. You can't expect him to be a wordsmith. That line would be... I think that line would work better if they had... If Wesley was like, hey, you fighting the Gruselog is going to be a big distraction while we do other things. Like, that would have made more sense to me. Like, he's trying to draw the fight out. But no. He, that was never said, so he's he doesn't realize the full extent of what his job is there. He is legitimately just trying to kill the Grusalog. Yeah. Yeah. Layers. Like an onion. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the castle hallway where Wesley and Gunn and Cowbro fight some bucket yes. heads after Silas runs off like the little bitch he is. Because he's a tool. Yeah. And then, so back at the 
whatever chamber place wherever Silas's office den is, I guess. I don't know what the place is called. Uh, Cordy tries to warn Silas that Gru will die by a green spiky demon. Just tries to tell him about her vision. Uh, he slaps her. He shows her the Denogonizer 5000. And my favorite part is when he shows it to her, he doesn't say what it is or anything. He's just like, oh, see, I have this. And it's like he thinks that she's going to know exactly what it is. Damn it, woman. Don't you know how evil I am? I'll kill everyone. <laughs> and it's like she doesn't know what it is. I feel like she parses it together with context. Kind of, I guess. But he doesn't give her much context. I'll kill every cow in the world. Hamburgers for all. But and like, then no more hamburgers at all, ever. But yeah. That's why it's the hamburger. It burgles your hamburgers. Right after giving you a lot of hamburgers. We've gone over this. It has a brand name. We, they, they pay a lot for that branding, Josh. We're going to have to make chili, Rex. <laughs> Cut to the courtyard. <laughs> Uh, Gru, Gru and Angel are still fighting. They're still fighting. And then Gru starts winning. He seems to have him pinned. He's got him like hooked around something. He threw a bolo. Oh. He threw a bolo and got his arm like hook, hooked around a, a post or some shit. Yeah. And then he's just beating him. He's beating him. Whipping him repeatedly. And I thought maybe they were going to talk it out here because he's like... You would dare defile her. And I thought Angel was going to perk up and be like, what? No. Why would I defy? I love She's my best friend. (laughs) I thought you were going to defile her. (laughs) And then they were going to go get a beer together. I thought that was how this was going to end for a moment. Uh, Nope. Demon time. Yep. He vamps out. And uh, yeah. Cut back to Silas and Cordy. West Cow and Gun show up just as Silas is poised over the No More Hamburgers machine. I'm sorry. The Denogonization 5000. The Denogonizer 5000. Denogonizer 5000. Is it 5000 plus? No. There's no plus. Just the Denogonizer 5000. Sorry. Um, anyway. God, we're never going to get a brand deal at this rate. No. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and West stands down uh, while Cordy brings it up from the rear. Uh, Because Wesley puts his sword down when he sees that he's got his hand over the device. And uh, Wesley's all, stand down. You don't have to do this. Silas is all, I don't have to, but I'm going to because I'm evil. And you and your filthy cow princess can go straight. Shing. And Cordy makes use of the original denogonizer. Yeah. A sword. A sharpened stick of metal. (laughs) And she tops it off with a nice one-liner. Your cow princess is tired of hearing you yak, Padre. Mm-mm. He's good and dead. Love it. They tell her, Angel's fighting the Grusalog. She's like, oh, no. Right after making sure that beheading this species actually works. And they're like, yes. oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's important. That's how that works. It's important. I was hoping for some demon fighting tonight, but I wound up with a delivery job instead. If I come back here on the end of a spatula, I'm expecting some serious workman's comp. I'm just messing with y'all. We go back to the fight uh, where Angel is hard air quotes mauling Grusalog. He's kind of just slapping him. Yeah. And it's like, quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. They're... They're more or less just <laughs> rolling around on the ground now. They're not really fighting anymore. But There's a lot of snarling going on. Yeah, now. there is a lot of snarling. So, uh, But Angel manages to stop himself from killing Gru and turns back to human. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just, just after he turns back to human, Cordy arrives to stop the fight. Yeah, well, he tries to be all noble and stuff, and Gru punches him in the face. And he's like, hey! Hey! Starting to get numb. <laughs> That's three Ace Ventura references in one episode. Man, we're on a roll. Um, <laughs> but Cordy steps in, and she loves him. <laughs> Not Angel. Yeah, Gru. Angel's confused, understandably. 
does she not love him? You know, like at least as a friend and coworker for fuck's sake, Angel, it's not all about you just because you're what the show is named after. Yeah. Ugh. What an asshole. What an asshole. But she announces it to the crowd that Silas is dead and anyone who fucks with a human is going to have to answer to her for at least another day. Right. But right before she goes home. Yeah. And then they can do literally whatever they want. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But she doesn't say that part. No. No. Because she doesn't want to give any hints. Wouldn't have as much of an effect, really. Right. (laughs) <laughs> cut back to lauren's mom's house yeah the next day lauren's got his body back quote of the day out of the gate lauren says good as new though i seem to have put on about 158 pounds <laughs> referring to his entire body yes. besides his head which I did some which, quick math in my head i was like okay he's probably a maybe about six foot 158 pounds plus the weight of a human head, which is generally a little more than a bowling ball, 15, uh, 20 pounds. Uh, it's less than that. It, I've I've read that it's around like 8 to 10. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, 10 sounds right. Still, that's pretty light. I mean, he's thin, but... I mean, uh, 100, 170? 170 like, pounds? That's, that's what I weighed in high school. That's... But granted, you know, I'm six I mean, two. My my dad, when he was younger, he's six foot, and when he was younger, he was around 185, 190 pounds. But he was pretty freaking muscular. Yeah, and Lauren's very lean. Yeah, Lauren's very very lean. So right, I fine. I believe it. I'll take his word for it. 168 pounds total. Good for you. Well, also he's got horns. Yeah. So, and don't forget the latex. Lots. Right. Lots. Lots of latex. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay, no more metagaming. My anyway, bad. Angel encourages him to make up with his mom because she's not been that bad. Yeah, he tries to reunite Lauren to his mother, who nearly showed a sliver of care for her son. Yeah. Um, but then continues talking and clearly only cares about all the additional shame that the runt of her loins has brought upon them. Yeah. So cause... Lauren's all... Okay, bye, Mom. Thanks for storing my body on the lice pile instead of the maggot heap. Well, that's before she goes on her tangent, but still. They leave, and uh, they're like, let's go back to L.A., where guys like us belong, because no one belongs there. Well, I did, like, I didn't write down specifically what he said, but he was talking about how he was kind of glad he did this, because before this, he was always feeling like he you know had to come back home but he came back home and he realized that he didn't actually have to come back home and he, but he, he had to come back home to realize that he right. didn't have to come back home and, and you know what even though that sounds really stupid i get that i oh god yes i've gotten closure on multiple past relationships with exactly that logic yeah i've been lucky enough to like go back and hook up with an ex on a couple of different different exes, a couple of different occasions, this happened more than once, where I pretty much relived the entire relationship in a compacted amount of time that allowed me to realize that it was a bad relationship. Yeah. That I needed to that I needed to move on. It gave me all the closure I needed so that I could stop being fucked up about it. Yeah. And you know, good. Yeah. Good on him. And that's what this is for Lauren. And he's so happy he feels like singing, much to the dismay of literally everybody else in the world. Except for Angel. Well, yeah. And probably also Gunn and Cordelia. Yeah. But they weren't there. And I liked his choice, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It was appropriate. It was very appropriate. Especially considering all the titles they've been giving all of these damn episodes. Exactly. Cut back to the throne room. Yeah, Cordy's uh, laying down some decrees. She's outlawing slavery and religious persecution, destroys the denogonizer 5000, and uh, Fred figures out how to get them home. Just happens to be using the trionic books that Wesley found earlier. Yeah. Gunn, the resident local black man, informs the Grusalog of the racial troubles ahead of him. Yes, he defines reconstruction. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, what is this reconstruction you speak of? And I'm like, shut up. As if they didn't have the fucking word reconstruction. And as if you didn't literally just hear her say it. Right. Like, why would you put the emphasis on the O like that? Wouldn't you just spell it wrong in your head? 
If right, like if your alphabet's different, and whatever. Anyway, uh, it's dumb. But no, I thought it was funny that she's like, "Well, you're gonna have some crazy times ahead." And he's like, "Why is that?" She's like, "I'm gonna let Gun handle that." And I'm like, "Oh, because he's black," which you know, it's kind of appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> And I really liked how he delivered everything he said. Like it really, like the whole the whole bit there. Was... I I did too. Like yeah, I don't want anybody to think that I'm in any way being shitty about him being black. I just felt that it it felt like tokenism. Oh, it, there, it was unquestionably a bit of tokenism. Everything else was totally fine. They were trying, but that honestly sometimes it's cringy when they try and yeah. it felt like tokenism that's all i'm saying about that everything no, else was great i think you're exactly right i think they managed to do it well despite it being tokenism yeah but yeah it it was i agree it was tokenism <laughs> uh, and then we cut to caritas where they're gonna put the car in caritas <laughs> It's okay. Warren wanted to redo his bar anyway. <laughs> Who wants nightcaps? I know I do. I I would need so many drinks after all that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Good thing we landed in a bar. No shit. That's why they come back to the Hyperion so goddamn happy. Exactly. So cut back to the Hyperion where they're all coming up the front gate walkway area. Cordy assures Fred repeatedly that tacos abound. Tacos abound. Angel is just itching to say some corny shit upon entering, and he tries to say, there's no place like... Huh. But Willow is sitting there waiting yeah. for them. You Such know, a buzzkill. Because Buffy's dead. Yeah. Gerarg. Gerarg. Is this for me? I must be ready. I need my strength. Strength. Nights, I shall walk in Hold on. You've got something here. That's the end of season two. It sure was. And the end of season five of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes. Woo! Uh, ask me how I felt about that, Rex. How did you feel about this episode, Josh? Well, the very first thing I want to talk about is the absolute last thing. Because I absolutely love that we decided to do this in airing date order. Yeah. For this moment exactly. Like it's been kind of a slog otherwise. Yeah. Um even though you might disagree cuz I know uh, only a few episodes you were like I'm so happy we did this every other episode thing, but it's moments like this that make it worth it. Because if we hadn't just watched the episode of Buffy where Buffy dies, this right. wouldn't have hit right. I completely agree. I'd have been like, "Wait, what's wrong with Buffy?" I completely agree. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And it made me think about how all of the shit that happened on Buffy was happening concurrently with all of their shit in Pylea, and that's just fun. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Mm Mm-hmm. It ties it all together. It really brought the room together. (laughs) Anyway, how'd you feel Um, about this episode, Rex? You know, of the the three episodes dealing with Pylea, this was the good one. Yeah. Um, it was definitely much, the better of the three. Much like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it felt like they wrote the ending first. Yeah. And then clunkily worked their way backwards. Like, it... I think it worked. I think it was pretty good. It did not drag on like the previous episode did. Like, I I was pretty happy with it. Yeah. That being said, this season finale comes nowhere fucking close to Buffy's. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nowhere fucking close. Like, this felt like a regular episode to me. Like, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't have the weight that felt like a season finale. It felt like a regular good two-parter. Exactly. But definitely not like a regular Monster of the Week. Right. Right. Um, but, yeah, finale-wise, meh. But still good. You know, for Angel, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. I I do think we might have been a little too hard on the first Pylea episode. The second one definitely started to feel a little better. And you know what I think it might have been is because I've been watching it in widescreen high def. 
And See, it, I don't. I know you don't. I know. Um, and I tried clipping off the edges of the last episode of Buffy that we watched because I was like, the framing makes a lot of difference. It really and does. Also, even just having like a CRT monitor filter that gives it a little bit of fuzziness because otherwise it's too damn cheesy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't remember this being cheesy. This cheesy anyway. Right. I remember feeling like I kind of sort of took this seriously. Maybe it's because I was binging it, but maybe it's because I'm watching it in too high of def and in a fucking ratio format it wasn't intended for. Yeah. That makes a big ass difference. It really does. It really does. And you can tell that when they created the show, they knew they were shooting it for the specific setup that they were shooting it for. They weren't, this wasn't something like, modern day television where it's it's shot for you know every size screen possible kind of thing Mm -hmm. you know they they were shooting this to air on cable fucking tv yeah so like that's what it's meant to be Mm -hmm. so and it was before wide screens were as widely available and affordable as they are now exactly so it was you know four three ratio Mm -hmm. and it the show feels vastly different when you watch it in the right format. I had a CRT television up until like the early aughts. Or I'm, no, the, the early teens of the 2000s. I can't remember when I got rid of mine. It was pretty late in life, though. Like I held on to one for quite a long while. And now they're all either being decommissioned or picked up by weird gamers who like to play Smash Brothers with them because... There's like a, a couple milliseconds lag time that you pick up that oh, you really? get that you get rid of on a CRT monitor versus an LCD. Huh. Yeah, it takes just a a couple microcosms of time extra to get that higher resolution that makes a difference in uh Twitch uh fighting games. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think it was an okay it was an okay episode. It was decent and yeah, Fred was delightful. Angel um I think he did some good character development especially considering all the shit he went through earlier this season. I think yeah. they kind of sort of tried to wrap that up and didn't do a terrible job. No, they didn't do too terrible and Wesley came into his own gun was basically he was feeling like he was making up for being a dick to his people which i still don't like how they handled that whole storyline i feel like it was an afterthought right um but at least they tried and i i like the concept of what they were trying to achieve with gun's character yeah um and they're in, they did a great job introducing our new character fred she's a fucking national treasure you know what they really should have had? They should have had something where Gunn had to make the decision for someone to go off to get killed. Oh, yeah. So that he can stop blaming himself. Maybe that's his arc for next season. Maybe. Probably yeah. not. But that yeah. would have been a good arc. Because Even if it's just one episode arc. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Cordy's arc. Cordy's arc. I think she realized that being princess isn't good when it's right bad yeah like (laughs) (laughs) which we all kind of knew from the very beginning like why would you want to be princess of this shithole right it's bad here you should (laughs) just go home but lauren has been telling us all that it's a bad place let's fucking believe the person born here thank you seriously though it's like when anybody tries to argue with me that my hometown isn't a shithole. It's like, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> I fucking know that it's a shithole. I know more about it being a shithole than you could ever. <laughs> On the other hand, it is weird at having a bunch of friends who live here in my hometown telling me that, you know what, this is actually a pretty good town to live in, which has changed a lot of my perspective Because I always felt like, man, this is a shithole town. I want to get the hell out. Um, And I definitely still feel the need to spend a good deal of time somewhere else. But I wouldn't feel bad about coming back here anymore. And, you know, suffice it to say, 
Fuck Pylea. Yeah. Well, it's going to be okay now. <laughs> fuck slavery. Well, yeah. And fuck the covenants. I think, uh, well, and maybe fuck the the Deathwalk clan. They're, yeah. They're kind of shitty. They're, yeah. They were like the Republicans Man. of, of <laughs> Pylea. Yeah. Because even Lauren's mom was like, how are we going to do any labor without any slaves? Right. How dare you bring shame upon our family? You're like, oh, fuck you for disowning your son. <laughs> That's kind of shitty. Yeah. Anyway, you got a quote of the day, Rex? I do got a quote of the day. I'm giving it to Fred, where she's just so casually says, I'll just roll him over the cliff into the dragon gully like I did the others. I approve. <laughs> Me likey. It was so pleasant and evil and deserving of of the captain. Very nice. What's your quote of the day? You know, there were, there were a few funny parts, and I normally go for the funny ones, but I think the one that had the biggest effect on me, that made me go, oh, damn, was when uh, Gunn says to Wesley, you really think he'll come back? And Wesley says, I need him to think that. Yeah. Because that, that was a turning point in the episode where I'm like, shit, Wesley's yeah. getting shit done. Damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this may be called Angel, but <laughs> this was kind of Wesley's episode. Yeah, it it really was. He or he fucking without Wesley. Okay, they all played their part. It's fucking teamwork, but Wesley took the lead and he fucking No, he he is damn. he's definitely come into his own as a leader and I I'm loving that arc. He's I'm his own it. kind of ripper and I fucking love it. Yeah. Because I'm sadistic like that. <laughs> I'm a bad person, Rex. Well, no, it's nice. It's nice to see characters that we've been with for quite a long while getting to be badasses the way we feel that they ought to be badasses. Nevertheless, whenever I mimic him, I will always well, yeah, do that stupid, high pitched, nasally, exactly fake British <laughs> accent. You know the one, Rex. Yes. That's the one. I'm Wesley. Exactly. I'm in charge of things. Nah. <laughs> well, it's still quite fitting. Indeed. Very much so. Well, fuck a doodle do, Rex. I think this has been another episode of Ale with Angel. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Check out our website, www.beerwithbuffy.com. You can buy our stuff at www.beerwithbuffy.com slash shop. If you'd like to support us as a Patreon or an executive doodle do as we have dubbed them, head on over to patreon.com slash beerwithbuffy. We have a cat naming perk. Maybe we'll do something better than that soon. Who knows? And keep in mind, we have our live Q&A happening Sunday, January 29th. 1 p.m. Eastern Time. If you would actually like to be on the Zoom call, all our patron supporters will get to be on the Zoom call. Damn right. And if you have any questions about that, just check out our Facebook page or our Twitter page, or you can email us at beerwithbuffy at gmail.com. You can send us a voicemail at 269-743-0783. You can also text that number. Big shout out, as always, to JJ Treadway. The Spinel with Angel. I'm Josh. I'm Rex. Have a good night. Kill your speed, Rex. Reeves be with you.
bit um, British, wasn't it? Wee! Wait, what have we done? Wh why are we watching this? <laughs>